one of the things that we often get asked is, you know, how does this fit within a e-commerce environment? How would you actually deploy this information? So I just got a little demonstration example here that just shows a mock-up web portal about how people might access parts catalog information. Again, we just mocked this up just to show a bit of an example. So here we've got a engineer's login. So we can just log into that and then we have a view, probably fairly similar to a My Yahoo type of view, but specific around these assemblies. So maybe you deploy this view out to the engineer, uh, all your engineers, and they just see the assemblies that, are, that they're associated with, either because they're an engineer for the customer, or maybe they just look after these customers. So you can see here that we've got access to uh, some customer data, and we've got a link that will let us go down and look at this particular part right here with this serial number. Uh, over here, we've actually got some tasks. So if we've got some maintenance tasks, like preventative maintenance tasks, we can go off and link to that because all of the information that is created with Cortona Rapid Author, all of it is web-based, so very easy to deploy in this type of service portal. What we can also do is we can even link to training material that is uh, being created with Rapid Author so that we can always ensure that the engineer is up to speed with the latest maintenance procedures and techniques and even have them go through uh, an exam in the course to make sure that we check their understanding and that they're up to um, standard for that procedure. So what I'm going to do is actually click on here. So this is now showing me the pump data for this particular serial number Again, you can see all the functionality that we described already. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to go and have a look at a particular use case where maybe what we need to do for this one is to go and inspect the rotors in the pump and see whether we need to change those and therefore go and order them. So I need to look at this in a slightly more detailed view. But I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look at the drive shafts view. So now we see an exploded view created within the catalog tool and I can see the rotors there. But actually I'm not quite sure what it is, how, uh, how it is I actually dismantle this and go and have a look at it. So what I'm going to do is just go and select those parts and then I'm going to come up here to the inspection menu and I can then go and see a procedure specifically for inspecting those particular parts, the rotors. So I'm going to click on the standard procedure right there. And what we'll do is, here's the procedure of what we need to do in text. Again, all of this was authored actually in the manual tool that's part of Rapid Author. What I'm going to do is click on play and we're just going to run through this animation. Okay, so I can see here I need to use a wrench to remove the bolts. So I need to do that for all of the bolts in that particular sub-assembly. So I can also see that I next have to remove uh, the pump valve housing. And then what I need to see is that I need to inspect them for signs of cracking. And it's giving me a, a photograph there. So let me just roll that back there. It's giving me a photograph so that I can go and have a look. You know, what do they mean by wear or cracking? I can go and have a look at that photograph and get an idea about what it is I'm looking for when I'm running through this procedure. I can also see there's a tolerance call out there that says that that distance should be 17 and a half millimeters. So I know I can measure that and make sure that we're in tolerances for wear. Also, this is complete, another completely interactive document. So we're not just looking at a movie here, we're looking at something that's completely interactive that I can roll around, go and have a look at all aspects of the assembly so I know what I'm dealing with when I actually go and do this for real in the customer's site. So once I'm happy with that, I can just carry on and continue to look at this. Once we're finished with that, we can just put those back. And here it's just showing me that we need to just make sure that the shafts are seated correctly when we put those back in. OK, that's an important tip. I don't want to have to put it all back together and then find out that uh, we've not put it in properly. So here I need to put in some gasket sealant. 
and I need to watch my fingers when I'm putting that back in, that's a great tip. So then we're just doing the reverse of the procedure here, putting the bolts in. It would be useful to know how much we need to tighten those bolts up. And so we have a pop-up window that says that it's 25 newton meters, and it's actually all of these bolts that need to be that, and I can see that from the call-out right there. In fact, if I want to go back and review that, you can see I can do that, and I can then just roll that around and just see that from all of the angles. That looks great. Let's carry on. So now we've done that, we've got one last thing here, which is just to uh, adjust the pump. And this is great because what we've been able to do is replace the springs in the pump with the active objects, uh, which actually behave, have the same flexible characteristics of a spring. And we could just see that um, right there. So I've now run through that procedure and uh, it turns out that the rotors are indeed worn and cracked and we need to order some new ones. So I'm going to come back to the parts catalogue, go back to the drive shafts view here, because what I need to do is now I need to go and order these. So I'm going to go and find them, I'm going to select those, and then what I'm going to do is just come up to the order menu, and I can see a price list if I want, but actually I just need to get them ordered. So what I'm going to do is click on order part, and we're now going to add those to our basket. And now the e-commerce system on the back of this can go away and sort out billing the customer and getting the delivery of those new parts in double quick time. I hope that was a good overview for catalog for you and really just shows you how quick it is to be able to create parts catalogs from your existing data, create that for specific data configurations for customers and then deploy that in a portal where you can not only view 3D animated procedures, but also then when you've identified parts that need replacing, just to add that into an e-commerce suite as well. By using Cortona Rapid Author, this makes your engineers much more effective and also provides you with a fantastic way of increasing your spare parts revenue. My name's Sean Crouch, and it's been my pleasure to show you Catalog Tool today. And thanks very much. Great button there. You can see that indicates that it's automatically been linked. So now that we've actually changed the data, we've brought it up to the level of detail we want, made it the right color. Uh, we've got the text in good shape. The first thing we need to do is to actually author the different pages. So what I'm going to do is activate this default landing page here for the catalog. And before we do anything, let's go and preview and see what we get before we've actually de even done any work. So I'm just going to click on the preview, which is sort of like a trial publish. And again, you can see the catalog published in Internet Explorer. And we can see that even before we've done anything, we've still got quite a lot of functionality. We've got the model in a format that we can roll around and zoom in and zoom out. But right now we'd have no parts on the right hand side. So let's just set up this view. So first of all, we want a default camera angle um, just so that we've got a good view when the user first lands on that page. So that looks good to me. I'm going to click on set viewpoint. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change this and have a, a more meaningful name. So we're going to set that up and call that sheet one. So that's going to be the first master sheet of the parts catalog. The next thing we're going to do is we need to enable some parts to be visible on that page. By default, none of the parts are visible and you can see that because they're in grey down the bottom here. So we can set these up individually. And so you see here when it goes bold, that part will then be visible on the page. Or because there is a link between those two data sets, what we can do is right click on the sheet, come down here and automatically activate all of the rows based on what's visible in the 3D model. So if I now come over and preview this, you can now see that we've got uh, the same functionality as before, only now we've got a much better default view of the 3D model. And we've got a parts list on the right-hand side, 
and we can see here that it's automatically hotspotted. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to create another more detailed sheet that shows perhaps an exploded view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on this middle section right here. So we're going to focus in on the casing and these flanges, gaskets and bolts. So what we want to do is just a very simple explosion of those two parts of that middle assembly and ignore everything else. So what I'm going to do is come over here, insert a new sheet. And what I'll do is just drag that so it's under the sheet one. So that's how we set up the automatic transition between the two views. And we'll activate that sheet. And we'll just rename that to sheet two. So the next thing we want to do is remove irrelevant parts of the assembly. So if I click down on the assembly over here, I've just got a, a very easy structure here to be able to do that. And so now we've got what, what we actually need in order to then focus in on the view we want to create. So what I'm going to do is just zoom out a little there and I'm actually going to do a drag selection to select the parts that we want to explode, including the part we're going to explode away from. So now what I'm going to do is click on the explosion wizard. So the explosion wizard will just do this for uh, what we need automatically. So if we go through, we can then first of all set the explosion type. So linear explosion, explosion on one axis, radial, uh, so like spokes around a wheel or blades around a turbine. So we just need to stick with the uh, linear explosion. The next thing I need to do is to set the strength and direction of the explosion. So we're going to do it perpendicular to the surface of the flange. So I just drag the manipulator there and all we need to do is just drag that up a little like that and here's our exploded view. We can adjust that so if I want to ungroup some of these parts so you can see here it automatically grouped parts that are in the same plane. I've just selected one and made it leave that so we've got complete control how these are positioned. If I want to regroup those, I just need to select it, click on Make Group, and you can see now that it's back in that group. If I want to change the position of parts, I can move that up, move that down. And you know, if I want to change the anchor, we can do that as well. Uh, what I can also do is I can adjust the position. So if I want to make some fine-tuning adjustments, we can do that here as well. And so that's it. That's our explosion. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the same thing over here with this uh, set of the uh, assembly. So what I'll do is just select those and again we'll click on the explosion wizard. So you can see we can actually do multiple explosions in different directions to get the view that we need. So what we need to do is just drag that to the right surface and then what we'll do is just drag that uh, to where we need. And so we've got a similar view but going in an opposite direction for these parts here. And there's our two sets of explosions. You can see we actually have axial lines on there. These axial lines really are only there to use for the 2D view and we can switch them on and off. Uh, I'm going to leave them on because we're actually going to create a 2D view as well. So first of all what I think we'll do is just create, set this default viewpoint so that when we come into the 3D page this is the view that we see. Then what we're going to do is go over to the 2D preview window and this shows us uh, an isometric hidden line view um, as a preview for this um, uh, particular view here. So what we also want to do is we want to create some callouts. So at the moment we haven't actually enabled any rows to be visible on this page. As you can see here they're all in grey, there's no black and bold rows on there. So what we're going to do is just use this simple tool down here to activate with visible geometry. And so now it's just activated just the rows that we have in view in the 3D view there. So because we have some item numbers, we can actually automatically generate callouts. So if I click on the Generate Callouts view, you can see it automatically generates those along with their leader lines. So all we need to do now is click on the Create. And we'll just give that a name in keeping with the IPC page. 
And there we have it. There's our 2D view. And in fact, you can see that we've got the hot spotting there. So now that we've actually done that, let's click on the preview and go and have a look at what that looks like. Again, we can see the default view that we saw before. Now, if I right click on this part of the assembly, we can see another sheet we can go to to see it in more detail. And so there's our explosion. There's our subset of parts that we automatically added. And if I click over here, here's our 2D hotspotted view. So I can move that down, we can see that in more detail. And what I can do here is you can see that we've also got the hotspots there.